All right, so in our last examples, we saw how to track objects around the screen. Um, and for this project, we're going to extend that and focus on face detection. Um, this is an area of research that's been going on for decades with computers, um, but has gotten really, really good. And in fact, we experience this a lot with our phones where you're taking a picture um, and it automatically focuses on your face. Um, and uh, also things like social media where you can do cool overlays and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to look at a fairly simple example here. And then in the next video, we'll look at a much more complicated one that gives us way more data. Uh, but this first one is a model called Blaze Face. It's part of Google's TensorFlow library. And um, it's really great. It's meant to be super lightweight, which means it doesn't have, take up a lot of room on your computer quick to load and it works really well and it doesn't bog stuff down. And you can see from this fun uh, GIF here that it um, gives us a bounding box around our face and some, just a few key points. Um, then this might be enough for your project. It might not give you enough information. Um, and I'll include a link to this documentation page because it's got some interesting info, including um, how do you load this and how do you, some examples for how you would use this. Um, now, it's not going to work out of the box with P5.js without some extra work. Um, so I've gone ahead and done that for you. And th this is going to be really common. You find a cool library that you want to use, and it might take hours, you know, a bunch of work to kind of make these things kind of plug in together. Um, I'll also include a link to the original paper about this from the authors of this model if you're interested in digging into more of the details of how this works. Um, okay, so I've set up a simple project here. I've got my video webcam input. Um, the first thing that we need to do is import um, or load TensorFlow, which this first line here does. And then we need to import the Blaze Face model, which this does here. So this needs to be in your index. And then we can do everything here in our sketch. So um, the first thing that I want to do here is actually load um, this model. Um, and again, a model is a complicated mathematical structure. In our case, it's going to take pixels in from the video and it's going to spit out, um, you know, it does a bunch of stuff to it. And then it's going to spit out a prediction about where the face is on the screen. So I'm creating a variable called model. And then um, we, I want to load it in setup. But we run into our first potential kind of hang up here. And that's that according to um, the code, the, our um, model needs to be loaded asynchronously. Now we're really used to synchronous code in JavaScript, like here in setup or in draw, where everything happens exactly in order. And um, then, you know, the next command is not called until the previous one is finished. Um, asynchronous JavaScript, however, happens in the background. So we kick off a process and it runs until it's finished. And then at some point, whenever that is in the future, it gives us that result. And it might be doing other things in the meantime. We can't, however, call asynchronous code inside a synchronous function. And in this case, setup and draw are both synchronous. So the way around this is to create a separate function and call that from setup. So I'm going to um, create one called load face model. And then I can make a function for that. So normally, we would do something like this. To make it asynchronous, all we have to do is add this async keyword in front. and Boom, JavaScript handles the rest. It's all asynchronous inside here. And now an asynchronous function can have synchronous and asynchronous code in it. Um, but we're going to just go ahead here. Again, this is from the um, demo. We're going to say model equals await. So it's going to um, wait for this to finish. Blaze face dot load. And that's it. All the hard work happens behind the scenes with TensorFlow. Um, and in this case, it's going to be pretty quick. In the next example, we're going to look at the model can take easily 30 seconds to load. Um, so we're not going to look at how to do this, but you might want to think about adding a um, loading screen or something like that to your project. Super. OK, and that's all that we need to do for the setup. Next, um, we're going to focus on our draw. And um, I think the first thing that we want to do is verify is our video working? Because we don't want to try to get a face if there's no video yet. So I'm going to say if video. Now, we looked last time at a bunch of different ways of doing this. I found another one, which I think is better. Um, and that's video.loadedMetadata. Loaded metadata is a variable inside the video class um, that it's either true or false. And this seems to be the most reliable and preferred way of doing this. So you can use the other checks we did before. I think this one is the way to go. 
Um, I also want to know if the model is loaded yet. Remember, it's asynchronous, so it might be happening in the background. Um, by the time draw starts, it still might not be finished. So I'm going to say and model does not equal undefined. Um, and so now that I know both my video is working and the model is loaded, if that's the case, I want to get the face. And once again, this is, needs to be an asynchronous function. So I'm going to put it here um, as a calling to a function that we'll create down below. And um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so this will be another async function. You know, we can call this whatever we want. And um, there's going to be a couple steps here. So the first is I'm going to create a, a variable called predictions. And this is going to be model.estimate faces. And oops, this takes um, a couple of arguments for us. Um, the first is going to be, let me just sort of tidy this up. Um, you'll see this a lot in JavaScript where you've got sort of like um, a lot of stuff compiled together. And um, so keeping track of your curly brackets and your semicolons and your, you know, everything is going to be really important. Um, so the first thing that we need to tell it is what, um, what thing to look at, where to look for the faces. Um, and so I'm going to use, there's a bunch of ways you could do this. Uh, queries, sorry, this is hard to type at the same time. Um, query selector, there we go. Okay, I'm trying to like look at my notes and type at the same time. Um, so we need to tell it what to, what element to look at. In this case, we're going to ask it to look at the video. Um, and the video is going to be our um, the element that was loaded when we created this here. It is hidden, but there's still data there. And this is going to be really easy for us. Then um, we also want to just tell it false. And false means um, we don't want the fancy mathematical results. We want sort of like real world screen coordinates. So you don't need to worry about that unless you're interested in kind of like the nitty gritty. Okay, and you can see I was I was off on my curly brackets and stuff here. Basically, this is just um, you. This could be all one line for a fun, for um, for this, but I've made it on several lines because it's a little easier to read. Um, so this gets our predictions, and when it's finished, we want to know did it find any faces. So if predictions dot length is zero, meaning it didn't find any faces. We're going to say face. Oh, we need to create a variable for the face data. So we'll say face is undefined. If we didn't find any predictions, otherwise face will be equal to the first prediction. Now, um, this can track more than one face. In our case, we're just going to do one. If you wanted to expand this, you could definitely do that. OK, and that's all we need to do. So we have this function. It's going to um, send in the video, get back a result. And if that result has nothing in it, then the face is undefined because there's no faces. And if it is, um, then we're going to set that. And so then we need to create one more variable up here called face. Let's run this. And we're not going to see anything yet, but let's just run it and make sure everything is working. Um, so I'm not getting any errors, which is really great. Um, Super. Then what I think we should do is get some, let's first just see the result of these predictions. So um, I'm going to say in the draw, if face does not equal undefined, so if we have face data, then we can do something with it. So let's say console.log face, and then let's do no loop, because otherwise it's going to print it over and over. And this way we can kind of see the results of this um, system. And this, you know, we talked about this last time, this is really helpful too, to just kind of like see what, what data does it give us? What format is it in? Um, and hopefully you can see here, it's a little, a uh, little small, but we've got um, the uh, bottom right corner and the top left corner of the bounding box. We've got this um, probability number, which is the um, chance it thinks there's a face. So it says here is 99.979% chance. That's pretty good. And then our landmarks and the landmarks are defined here in, um, in the documentation. So it's not in the most like clearly labeled format, but once you kind of figure it out, it's pretty easy to see. Cool. Um, so that's, that's going to be really helpful for us as we start to try to work with this. So I'm going to comment this out just so we don't keep seeing that. And um, I've gone ahead and grabbed all the landmarks here. So I'm just going to paste that in. So um, I've created variables in each frame. 
for these landmarks. Um, and the result, though, remember that our video is not necessarily the same size as our sketch. It's going to be coming in from our webcam. So the position of these things is relative to the size of the video frame but not to the size of our canvas. So I want to scale them in some way. They're also, to me, in a format that's not as useful. Um, so we're going to create a little um, function. And again, I'm just going to grab this here. So this is a little function I made. It takes in the point. Um, you can see here that those locations are as an array, where the first value is the x and the second value is the y. Um, and basically, I'm just scaling them, video.width. Um, to the size of the screen, and then I'm returning it as a vector, which just is, I think, much easier to keep track of. So then um, we can scale points, for example, like this. And again, I'll just, you don't need to watch me type all this, just paste this in. So um, let's scale the right eye, the left eye, and the nose, and now its X and Y position is going to be relative to our canvas. Um, oh, I did forget one thing. Let's go ahead and display the video. Uh, so that'll be our video, zero, zero. And I'm going to stretch it to fit the screen. This way, my video fills, or not the screen, but it'll fill my sketch size. And um, yeah, actually, let's save this and run it again, make sure nothing's going wrong. And we should see our video pop up here. And that'll be an indicator that, yeah, there we go. Double Jeff again. Super. Um, OK, now with these scale points, now the fun begins. We can just do some stuff. And once again, I'm just going to paste this in here um, because really this is where the creative work happens. Um, and this is like a really dumb demo of what you can do with it. Uh, I'm sure you'll think of some really fun stuff. Basically, I'm just um, drawing circles and you'll see here it's going to give me funky cartoon eyes. There we go. <laughs> so it's a little laggy, which might be in part because I'm recording video at the moment using my camera. Um, so normally it follows me around a little bit better. Um, and I look really dumb in this video down below. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's, that's it. Um, all we need to do is grab those landmarks, scale them to the screen, and then do something fun with them. Um, the hard work really is kind of happening here and with the TensorFlow library. But um, yeah, so in the next demo, we'll look at um, another model from TensorFlow that gives us much more complex data. And we'll see some other ways that we could use this. But I'm sure you could think of some really cool stuff just with these um, six landmarks that it gives you here.